Good morning. Good to be with you this morning. I've, you know, my tradition on uh, Labor Day weekend has been lately, I think the last four years, that I do cowboy church out at the Plum Creek Rodeo. And I was out there ready this morning, and we had a large crowd there. And it was a beautiful morning, and to see the sun come up. And so now I get together with you. So I've already, I'm warmed up already. So I'm good to go for the morning. So I hope you're ready to go to worship God and to gather. So would you please stand this morning and say hello? Uh, we're not going to let you shake hands yet, but say hi and welcome, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Good. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Our call to worship this morning comes from Revelation 4, verses 9 and then 10 and 11. It says, Day and night they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Amen. Let us sing together. The words will be on the screen this morning. Uh, both Cornerstone and My Redeemer Lives. So let's sing together.
in his righteousness alone For we stand before the throne
us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we gather here in your house this morning. Lord, um, we are thankful that we are invited into your home. Lord, as you worship here together, Lord, we pray for a blessing upon our service today. May your spirit be present within this place. We pray for those that have gathered here in your name. Lord, for those that are at home as well this morning, we pray that they are blessed as well. Lord, may you join us here. May you wash over us. Lord, we also pray that you help us set aside the things of this past week that has gone on in our lives, whether blessings and great joy or whether hard, difficult things and maybe some bad news. And Lord, we know that you are the God of all. And may we just feel that today and may we just worship you in a fullness. Lord, may we come and uh, just um, express our love towards you through worship today. In Jesus we pray, amen. I'm going to invite uh, the children to come forward this morning, and Al will lead us in the children's message. Come on up, and we'll just sit around here. We'll make enough room for everybody. How you guys doing today? Pretty good? Have any of you had a bad day this week? Have you had something happen that just wasn't right? Kind of ruined your day and didn't make things go good for you? What was that? Some, somebody wasn't, was being rude at school. Somebody was, wasn't being nice to you? Would said some words to you that maybe wasn't too nice? Yeah, we all have things happen like that. I had a bad day yesterday. I was trying to paint something around the house, and I had to climb up on the ladder, and I had the bucket, the paint can sitting up there, and I knocked it off. That's a bad day for me. (laughs) But, you know, years ago in the Bible, they talk about people believed that bad things happened to them because they did something wrong. And Jesus says, no, that's not true. That's... Jesus was there to heal a a blind man, and the people asked him, they go, what did this man do that made him blind? And Jesus said, nothing made him blind. Um, God uses people like you and me. When we have something bad happen, he uses us to spread his word. And uh, just like this pop can here today, that pop can got a pretty good dent in it, doesn't it? It doesn't look too good, does it? That pop can's having a bad day, isn't it? But you know what? If we pray to to God and we ask him to come into our lives and kind of make us whole again and make us look like new, you know, God can do that. That can, the dent, we look just like new, don't we? That can is perfect again, doesn't it? And God doesn't make bad things happen to us. God wants to see us have good things. And he wants to use us to heal us on the outside and on the inside. And uh, that's what we want to remember, that God doesn't make bad things happen to us. He uses us when them bad things happen. We grow, and he uses us to make good things happen and to spread his word, okay? So let's remember that, that we're to spread God's word out there to other people, okay? Let's have a word of prayer, and then you can go back to your seats, okay? Let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, we just thank you for Jesus and everything he did for us while he was on this earth, Lord, and we just ask that you continue to bless us in that we may bless others as we go out into this world. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, El. Turn with me in your pew Bible this morning to Revelation chapter 8. And we're going to read the entire chapter. It's only 13 verses. It's not very long. And we're, So we're settling back in to the book of Revelation and the series as we uh, complete this. This series will take us up 
or right up until Advent um, through November, and so we have a few months to go here yet. And so I want to settle in on this. And now, um, if you need to bring yourself up to speed, I'm going to encourage you to go home and read chapters 1 through 7 and get the gist of what's going on with the seven churches and uh, last time I preached, we preached on chapter 7. It was the great multitude in heaven, but not everybody's there yet. There's a lot left on earth. There's unbelievers that are on earth, and there's even believers that are still there yet. And now we're going to flip the page to chapter 8. We went through the seals. Everybody remember the seals? So we got the seventh seal today, and the seventh seal reveals the next seven trumpets. And what's going on as far as judgment and so on. And we're going to get into that this morning. And so that's where we pick up. So if you're with me in your Bible, uh, Revelation chapter 8, 1 through 13. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stood or stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of God's people, went up before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. The seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. The reading of the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we hear from your word this morning, may you bring that word to life. Lord, we know that this is just a, a deeper verse, a deeper chapter here that you give to us. And Lord, we don't fully understand everything, but may your spirit still bring that word to life. May we learn something new this morning from your word. Lord, may we be challenged in our faith. May we learn to live in this world with those things that go on. And Lord, so may you bless us today. May you fill me with your Holy Spirit as I bring your message to your people. And may that same Spirit fill those that have gathered here today and for those that are at home listening as well. Lord, may they grow in their faith and may your Spirit pour over them. In Jesus I pray, amen. There was a young boy who told the preacher one time, Did you know that there won't be any ladies in heaven? And the preacher said he had never heard of that before. And he asked this young boy, do you have scripture to back that up? And the boy said, yes, I do. The Bible says that there's going to be silence in heaven for half an hour. If there were any ladies there, there couldn't be any silence for half an hour. Just a little joke for you this morning. Now we know that that's not true, don't we? But a little bit of humor, I think, is good for us to lighten the mood because today's message is kind of deep, it's kind of hard to hear, and we don't fully understand 
everything that's going on. And so I'm going to make that claim to you as a pastor today, uh, and many pastors today, that these are hard books. Revelation 8 through 11 are difficult. It talks about the wrath of God upon earth and the unbelievers and the things that take place. Now you need to remember that there are, are um, pictures that we, images that portray certain things that we don't fully understand everything. But there are literal things that also take place in the book of Revelation that we need to be aware of. And it's hard sometimes to sort through what they will look like or, or what's, what does this mean or that mean. And so it can be difficult from time to time. So we're going to start in chapter 8. And then, of course, the next several weeks we'll dive into this. And so let's begin this morning. So now we come to the seventh seal. The seventh seal reveals the seven trumpets and the devastation they have upon the earth and for unbelievers. Now you notice that on the end of the verses that I read, verse 13, it said, whoa, 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 and we'll get into that. That's trumpets 5 through 7. That would be next week's message. Today is trumpets 1 through 4 is what we're looking at. Judgment upon the earth. And so the, let me remind you too, just a little refresher here. The final three seals, which we would have discussed already in previous uh, messages, they come near the end when the tribulation starts and things begin to heat up for Christ's return. Christ is on the horizon. That final trumpet blast when God sends the sun out, he says, it's time. And so we, we begin to see uh, the beginning of the tribulation period on earth. Now, if you are a Baptist, uh, their belief is that there will be this rapture that will take place and that the believers will leave earth and they'll be in heaven. Now, the Reformed view does not take that stand. We don't believe that there will be a rapture. We believe that God will take people from earth through martyrdom or whatever it might be, but there will still be many believers on earth when the tribulation starts. The hard things begin to happen. So don't be fearful this morning. Hear me out. You will learn some things that will challenge you theologically. And by no means do you have to agree with whether, you know, I think the Baptist view is right or I believe the Reformed view is right. Or maybe you're in the middle. That's totally fine. It isn't a salvation issue. It's how the world will come to an end. And so there's some disagreements theologically between pastors and theologians. And so don't get hung up on that. Sort through this stuff and try to figure things out on your own. Reading scripture and what you're learning and what you're hearing through this set of sermons. So may I make the point this morning that there are still many believers on earth when we get to chapter 8. Remember that. And so these next chapters that we're going to discuss, 8 through 11, remind us about what we really don't like about the book of Revelation. This kind of pushes people away from Revelation. You know, we think, is this really going to happen? This is chaotic. I don't like this. It doesn't feel good. I don't want to be a part of this. Well, guess what? If you don't pass away before Christ's return, and I don't know when that'll be, you might experience this. And for me, I'd rather know what's coming than not understand anything at all. Because that brings me comfort to know what could be coming. There are good things that I will share with you this morning as believers in Christ. And so now things are starting to heat up upon the earth. And so if you want to follow along with your outline this morning, please do. When the seventh seal is broken, we see three preparations for judgment upon the earth. And they're on the screen this morning, so here they are. We see the shattering silence. We see the instruments of judgment that are going to be used in these trumpets. And we see the signs of the coming judgment beginning upon earth. God's people of unbelievers, non-believers. Revelation 8, verse 1. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. What do we need to do to understand that? This is the only time that the Bible speaks of a time frame of a half an hour. Nowhere else do you find this in Scripture anywhere. This is kind of unique. A half an hour. 
is wrote down. It's, it's there for us to read and for under, to understand. So there was silence and there was awe before God. How many of you are curious to know why this went on? Anybody want to know that today? Yeah. Why would there be total silence in heaven? Now, you got to remember, there are angels that are there. All, all of us believers that uh, were there, but, you know, some of your family members are already there in the presence of God in the throne room of heaven. Jesus Christ is standing there. God the Father is on the throne. These seven angels are standing there with trumpets. And so let me just kind of explain to you this morning of that. And if you have your Bibles open this morning, follow along with me because I'll read some of this back to you for deeper understanding. And I saw the seven angels, I'm beginning at verse 2, by the way, who stood before God. And seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all of God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense, God's prayers going up together with the prayers of God's people went up before him from the angel's hand. And so we first see these seven angels with seven trumpets. Now, I want you to picture this scene. This will help give you an understanding of the silence that's going on in heaven. Picture the heavenly hosts surrounding the throne of God. Remember those creatures that I talked to you about that were all seeing, all knowing, and they're around the throne, they're worshiping God day and night, and they're, they're crying out, holy, holy God, Lord Almighty, and so on. They're there. Think of this scene in your mind. It's mighty. Picture all the spectacular scenes that the believers are seeing in the throne room of heaven. Picture the horror that people have experienced because of follow, being a follower of Jesus Christ in this world. Those who were martyred, those who were murdered for their faith. Picture the suffering that has been witnessed by the angels, by Jesus, by the Father, by us on earth. And we carry that into heaven. Now picture the breaking of the seventh seal in silence for 30 minutes. And then all of a sudden bursting into view, there's seven mighty angels taking their place before the throne of God. Picture them standing there tall and broad and all-powerful. And they've been given the news of what to do. And you just read that. In chapter 8. And then the judgment rolls out. You see, everybody that was in the throne room, they'd seen these angels. They stood in awe of about what was going to take place shortly here on earth with the judgment of God coming. And they understood. It's time. It says in Scripture that everybody was in awe. Jesus didn't even speak for half an hour. As God gave the orders to go. Picture that scene. So what significance do these trumpets have? And so if you are familiar with William Barclay, he gives us something to think about. And there are three reasons that I want you to think about these these uh, trumpets, what they actually mean. So it can sound the alarm, right? When you hear a, hear a bell or you hear a trumpet. Uh, it can waken you from sleep or warn you of danger that's maybe coming. And God is always sounding his warnings in the ears of his people. Be ready. Be ready is what it says. Now here's the second one. It could be a fanfare uh, which announces the arrival of royalty. Get ready, something big is going to take place. Or, or somebody with uh, extremely high power, such as Jesus Christ talks about in Scripture, enters the scene. He enters with a trumpet blast. So it could signify that royalty is not far off. Or, the third thing, it could be to summon to battle. 
think of those three things. God is always summoning us, his people, to take sides in the strife of truth with falsehood and how you're going to live in this world and to become soldiers of the king of kings. So we see that this morning. So now you understand why there's silence in heaven. The all-powerful, mighty angels that are there, and they've been given the orders to be released upon earth to do these things. And then we have the second instrument of judgment. It's the prayers of all the saints of God. Believers. Do you guys pray? Yes. I pray. You pray. God hears those prayers. And what's beginning to take place is all those prayers that have been prayed, some have been already answered, but not all of them. All of a sudden now God, and he knows, they're, they're cast on to the altar. The incense is going up with the people, of God's people in prayer. And all of a sudden God says, you know what? It's time that I answer these prayers of my people. And things are going to come to an end fairly quickly. God hears your prayers. He hears you mourning for your losses. He hears the grief that you experience here on earth. And he says, now it's time to make things right. I hear the cry of my people. The second instrument of judgment is your prayers. Some were in heaven. Some were still on earth. The people of God I'm speaking of here now. We've already seen in chapter 7 that many will be killed and persecuted. The great multitude. But the point is that day is coming when God is going to answer the prayers of his people. All who have rebelled against Jesus will be judged. All of his followers who suffered so much at the hands of a godless society are going to have their prayers heard and answered. That's good news. If you're still in your Bible, go to verse 5. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. We start to see the signs of the coming judgment upon earth. Picture that in your mind. The prayers are cast upon earth. Signals justice. The justice of God will strike out in wrath against the ungodly and the evil of the earth. The great tribulation is beginning to take place and to unfold. So let's jump ahead here. Let's keep it moving along. Revelation 8, 6 through 11. We see that the silence is over. Things are starting to take place now upon the earth. The prayers have been heard. The first four trumpets bring devastation upon one-third of the earth. And so I kind of grouped these trumpets together because of the the lack of time, because I don't want you here yet at noon today. But one-third of the earth will be destroyed is what it says. Crops and food uh, will be, the supply of that will be interrupted, both for mankind and animals. The system will be altered. One-third of vegetation will be destroyed. One-third of the seas will become blood. And one-third of all the living creatures in the sea die. We hear of this star from heaven called wormwood, which means bitterness that affects all the fresh water upon the earth. One-third of it. And in fact, people who drink this water, they die from it. Contamination. The fourth trumpet affects the sun and the moon. It affects the laws of nature. But get this. Look on the screen this morning. Even through the midst of this, in the book of Genesis, it says this. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, and summer and winter, day and night, shall not ever cease, is what the Lord says. 
So even in the midst of all those things that are going on, we might see destruction and devastation uh, and so on upon the earth that you and I live in. God says there will still be seasons. There will still be night and day. You will still produce food of some kind. You will still be taken care of as believers. And I'll give you a verse here before you go home today that will even cement that in, in even more as believers here that are left behind. But let's look at this. This fourth trumpet is sounded, and then we see the announcement of whoa, whoa, whoa come into a play. How many of you, if you hear that, what is your reaction? You stop right in your tracks. What's going on? Is it something bad? I can say, yeah, it's something bad. The last three trumpets are separated from the first four. They are the woe trumpets. Now you might be saying, why are they, why are they such woe trumpets? Because the first four trumpets deal with the devastation upon the earth. The next three deal with the devastation of unbelievers, non-believers upon the earth. That's going to come against people. Judgment against people in particular. And that gets harder to understand, doesn't it? Non-believers. And so you're going to have to hang on to next week to hear that message of the final three trumpets. But let me ask you this question this morning. What kind of a chapter is this, and what kind of a God is this? If this is how it's going to play out, it's not very pleasant. It doesn't feel good. In fact, it might even worry some of you. Let me try to explain that to you this morning. The truth is today that many people, even Christians, are uncomfortable with the idea of God's wrath and judgment. Because a lot of us believe, and we do serve a loving God, and some people even believe there's no way that a loving God could send people to hell. That is unbiblical. That is not what the Bible teaches, by the way. God says there is a hell. It is a real place. And he will send people there that decide to turn their back on him. That's what he says. And here's the problem. We have a difficult time holding wrath and the love of God together. It's our human nature. Those two can't go together. How can love and wrath even be in the same sentence? You see, it's hard for us to understand. But this is what I want you to think about as you think about those two words, the wrath and the love of God in the same thing. God doesn't want people to go to hell. He wants everybody to reach salvation. But there are going to be people who flat out deny God and don't want nothing to do with God. He wants everyone to reach and find salvation through Jesus Christ. And God's judgments through history, think about the devastation and the, the widespread things that have gone on upon this earth for some six, 7,000 years since creation, all designed and allowed to bring people closer to him. He wants people to cry out to him for salvation. But even through the midst of all those things, some people will still not choose God. In these trumpet blasts that I just gave you, that when things start to heat up with the tribulation, people are still going to not choose God. Now, there'll be many that I think will have a, a chance here to profess their, their faith in Jesus Christ. They'll understand who God the Father is, and they'll get this thing through the work of the Holy Spirit. And many will still come to salvation, but there will be those whose hearts will be hardened, and they'll say, I don't want nothing to do with God. They'll hate Him. And in the end, God must set things right. We serve a God of mercy. And through these trumpets and seals, God is giving them a chance to repent. Did you ever think about this? He's not going to allow someone into heaven who hates him. That's never going to happen. 
He's not going to allow somebody into heaven that doesn't believe in his son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. That's not how that's going to work. Would you want somebody there that doesn't really love God or Jesus? Are you? Are your family? No. And God says, there will be no room for those people in heaven that turn against me. So here is a question for you this morning. On the top of the screen. What about those believers that are going through the midst of all these judgments that are still on earth? What's going to happen with them? And here is your answer. How will they withstand? How will they keep the faith? And we're not to this point yet, but Revelation 9 verse 4 says this. And it's on the screen in the blue box. This is your hope that you and I get to hold on to through the midst of this chaos and tribulation that's going on. They're, they were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Now, I don't know what that seal is for sure. Remember, we studied that earlier in the book of Revelation. Now, we could say, well, it's baptism, the seal of God, right? You're marked with the Holy Spirit. But there will be people that will be saved that aren't even baptized. But God knows in his mind, God understands, and I think that the believer will know too that he's been set apart for salvation. He trusts in God. His faith is in the Lord. He believes in Jesus Christ. And those that believe in Jesus, they'll be the ones with the marks on their foreheads. Don't get it confused with, well, what about the number 666 and all that kind of stuff? No, I don't think you'll see that. There will be a mark that you won't be able to see or uh, so on, but God knows who will come to salvation. And hopefully you and I are part of that number as followers of Jesus Christ. And God says, you don't touch those people. You can harm everything else, but don't touch my people. You will be protected. You will be watched over. You will be cared for in the midst of whatever's going on that you find yourself in, in this world, through this judgment. So if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, may you take comfort this morning in that. So here's my question this morning for you. Is your faith strong enough to withstand tribulation? The things I'm talking about to you this morning, is your faith deep enough to go through those things? And let me just say this to even fan this out a little bit more. You and I might not get to see this, but there are tribulations that you will face in your life throughout your lifetime. Different kinds of things will come and go. And those are also tribulations. And so is your faith strong enough to withstand those types of things? May that be encouragement to you today. And if it's not, you're saying, I'm struggling, I'm having a hard time, then you pray for God to give you the desire and the hunger to be in His Word, to pray, and to get to that place of peace in your life. No matter what goes on in this world, or what happens with my loved ones, I know that Jesus has got this, and I'm going to be okay no matter the outcome. That's where you need to live. That's where I want you to be in your faith journey. Some of you are there. Maybe most of you are there. Some of you are still maybe on the fringe yet, and you're like, ah, I need to get there. I need to keep working at that. I need to continue to grow in my faith. Is it strong enough to withstand the tribulation? Whatever God might throw your way. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, you've thrown quite a bit at us this morning in this chapter. There's a lot of things in there we don't totally understand and symbols that might mean stuff that we might not pick up on. But Lord, we know through your Spirit that you guide us through this and we're, we are thankful for Revelation 9 verse 4. Lord, that you watch and you care for your people. Lord, we are spiritually protected, and we know that one day we'll live with you eternally. We look forward to that great day. Lord, we pray for your church here on earth. We pray for your people as well, that may we continue to do your work. 
Lord, sometimes we get caught up in the little things of this earth and they pull us away or we focus on these things and yet, Lord, you want us to stay focused on you. What you're doing in our lives and what you're doing upon this earth. You want all to come to salvation. So we pray for the people of this earth. We pray for believers to do their part. We pray for those that maybe don't believe in Jesus Christ today. May they come to the faith. Those who live in our families, those who are our neighbors and friends that maybe don't know who Jesus is. And we just ask today, Lord, that your spirit continue to do its work. May we be the light that people need to see. May you bless us this week. In Jesus we pray, amen. I have a song for you to sing. Uh, let's stand. It's called, he, uh, Is He Worthy? And so it's a newer song, but you might have heard it. It's pretty easy to get onto. And so why don't we sing it together? See you.
couple things I want to bring to your attention this morning as we come into a time of prayer. Justin Brower has had a good week. So he, had, he uh, texted me last night. He was excited. He said, I don't want to jinx myself, but it's the best week I've had in my life in 13 months. Whole week was good. He drove his pickup for the first time all the way to Inwood, I believe, on Friday. And uh, he said, I haven't done that in 13 months. And so it's been a good week. And so God answers prayers. So keep praying. He is scheduled to go into another treatment here in the next few weeks. I don't know when. But the treatments that he took this last Monday and Tuesday were very effective and very good. He said when he left there, he knew something was different. He had relief right away. And so uh, our God is good. So keep praying for him. doesn't mean that a bad day might not sneak in once in a while, but we're going to keep praying for good days to keep coming his way. So we just want to give thanks to God for that and continued healing uh, for the Brower family as well. Also, uh, Kenny Van Beek, uh, many, many of you might know him. He will be going on to hospice care this week. Kenny's been fighting uh, cancer, I believe. And so uh, he's entering into the last stages of his life. And so we want to pray for Kenny Van Beek and his family as well. So I just bring that to attention. Uh, if you look in your bulletin of the joys and concerns, uh, Jared and Regan Van, uh, Van Gameren and the passing of Jared's grandmother, uh, Ali Vandehoof of Rock Valley. So we want to pray for them as well. Keep them in your prayers. Uh, other than that, we know Melissa Mosier had radiation on Friday uh, on her neck area back here. And so she was... Uh, a little sensitive to that, but not bad. It felt like a burn for her. And uh, so they'll wait to see how that uh, turns out for her here in the next week or so. Other than that, uh, I don't have any other prayer concerns. It's been a good week in the family of God and the church and our community. And so we just want to remember those who have COVID. There are a few more of us around that have that, I've heard. But uh, nobody's been hospitalized that I'm aware of. So that's a good thing. And so may we continue to seek wisdom. Uh, and so I will remind you this morning, uh, last year we all, last week we got up, we all went out at one time. And so uh, I'm going to ask you to go a row at a time yet from the back to the front. So a derv will come through and just let you go or you can follow along. So we'll try to go single file yet. Uh, we still are under CDC guidelines and I definitely don't want to lose the privilege to have you all in church. So let's do our best to kind of follow those rules. So... Let's do that. Let's come to our Lord in a time of prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you uh, with good news with Justin Brower today. Lord, we give you praise for healing. And Lord, we ask that this will be a normal way of life for him now. Lord, we ask that the bad days are past him and gone. Lord, give him wisdom of what he can and can't do, and may he give his body rest when it needs it. And I just pray, Lord, you continue to bring healing to his Lyme disease. And so, Lord, we pray over him today. We thank you for the blessing of a good week. We thank you for the encouragement that that must have given him. And we pray for Kerry and his family, and we pray for their extended family as well. Lord, may things look normal in their lives. We pray for that to return today. Give them strength, and may your spirit wash over them. Lord, we also pray for the family of Kenny Van Beek today. We know as he enters hospice care, Lord... Uh, we just pray over him that you are ready to receive him and he's ready to receive you. Lord, we pray for his children and their families. Lord, at this difficult time, may your grace and love just be sufficient for all of them. Lord, we also want to pray today for Jared and Regan Van Gammer and the loss of a grandmother. Lord, um, we know that they celebrated her life this past week and they laid her body to rest. Lord, she was a member of our congregation here at one time. And Lord, we know that your work continued on in her life. So we thank you for her faith. Lord, we also pray for those that are fighting cancer today. We think of Melissa Mosier with the radiation treatment this past Friday. We know that it went well. And Lord, may she make a quick recovery from that. May this be effective in killing that tumor that's on her spine. May it give her relief from pain as well. And Lord, we pray for others within our community. We think of Trish Lombard today and for Suzanne Mangering and Brent. Lord, um, Gail's son, we pray too for, for healing. And others we know of within our families who have cancer. 
May your hand be upon them. Lord, we also pray for those who have COVID. Lord, we know there's families within our community and individuals who have this, and we pray for quick recoveries and, Lord, for no hospitalizations. We pray for this virus to go away. Lord, we pray for this to end, and we ask boldly today that this may be a thing of the past very soon. And may we return to a normal way of life. May we return to a better way of life, even better than before. Lord, we pray for our nation today with the unrest and the hatred that we have, and may you bring peace to all people. And may we be an instrument of peace, the church, to this nation. Lord, as there seems to be much hatred towards God and towards the church today within our nation, may that go away. Or may we rise to the occasion to show love to others. Lord, so we do pray for those. We pray for our school teachers. We pray for our students, our colleges, faculties, Lord. May your hand be upon them. May you uh, give these institutions wisdom of what to do and how to handle these situations as they come against COVID. Lord, may you carry us through these things. Lord, may you be with your church family this week as they go to our mission fields. May you inspire us to do your work. Lord, we also pray for our farmers today, those who are in the egg field as silage season is pretty much wrapped up now. We thank you for safety. And Lord, we move into other seasons of harvest, and we just ask for your blessing upon our farmers today. May you give them a special measure of strength and awareness Lord, and may you keep, a, keep them from any kind of injury or even death. So we pray for the farmers in our area today, Lord. We pray for those families who will begin harvest soon. Lord, may our harvest be bountiful. May you provide in ways that uh, go beyond just the normal day-to-day routines of our lives. May we see your blessings. May you just wash over us, Lord, with your spirit. Lord, be with your people. In Jesus we pray, amen. Remember your offerings on the way out. We pray for those as God does His work as well within the church and the community through your offerings. And at this time, would you please stand for His benediction today. And our closing song will be on the screen. If you want to use the hymn book, you're welcome to. It's number seven. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Receive His blessing today as you part for the mission field. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace, and the love of God be upon you. Amen. Go in peace today. Here be